what's up guys it's Davin Trigue again and you are currently tuned in to the second video of my tutorials over Tractor Scratch Pro and Tractor Pro. This time we are going to be going over organization of your media library, importing new songs both inside of Tractor and outside of Tractor, uh, best way to organize it and how I organize it. You can do this however you want to. I will tell you the best ways and what's worked for me and and we'll go from there. Okay, so with that being said, let's go ahead and import a track. I did download a new track. It's a Felgic and Mr. Shemmy Blaze It Up original mix. I will include the link to that download via Beatport in the uh, description of the uh, YouTube video here. So if you do like the track after watching the tutorial, go show your support. Go download the track. It's pretty badass. Definitely like it. So anyway, I'm going to show you how I organize my music. I'm using a Mac. Most of the stuff that I'm going to go over in here will work exactly the same way on a PC. There's some things that won't, like the uh, nifty little spacebar playback button. That won't work very well on a PC. So, <laughs> anyway, this is my typical finder window here. Or on a PC, it's going to be your explorer window. If you look up at the top here, you'll notice that I have pretty much all my shortcuts to my individual genres of music. Okay, now I've stored all my music on the internal hard drive. I used to use an external hard drive. The reason why I changed that is because Tractor really does not like having massive libraries, especially running on an external drive as well. It makes it for an incredibly long load time. So I opted to just take all the tracks that I was playing and put them on the actual computer itself. And then if I ever do any gigs that are, you know, not in a performance aspect, more like a party or a prom or a, a wedding, etc., etc., then I could bring my external hard drive. This track is the Feltrick Mr. Shimmy It's Blazed Up. Like I said, it's a wicked track. Now, if I had multiple songs, what I would do is I would actually highlight the track and, whoops, not try to change the name. There you go. I'd actually highlight the track and I would just hit the space bar. Okay, what I do that is that way I can actually hear what kind of song it is. I can also hear and make sure that I put it in the right folder. If you download a bunch of stuff off of Beatport, you know, if you have 12, 13, 14 tracks, most of the time you really don't remember what they are, so it's good to listen to them before you throw it into a folder. That way you know where to find them, and you also have good organization to all your music. So in this case, um, I'm going to put this guy in my, my performance folder, okay? So once I drop that into the performance folder there, it's it's always going to be in my performance folder, so that's, that's pretty cool. Look at my performance folder, you can see all of, you know, all my tracks in here, and, you know, all the original names, and et cetera, et cetera. Um, so once we load that into that performance folder, it's always going to be there. So that's actually the first step. That's how I organize inside of Finder slash Explorer. You could do iTunes. You can import it into iTunes. Personally, I don't use iTunes just because I have so much music. There are some tutorials out there on how to organize your library and run your library through iTunes via Tractor. This is not one of those. <laughs> this is how I organize my library, and it's efficient and works for me. So if you want to try it this way, then great. If you want to try it some way else or do the iTunes, then definitely you know search YouTube. There's a lot of videos out there that will definitely help you out. So with that being said, now let's move on to Tractor. Boop. All right, so inside of Tractor here, I was actually messing with a couple tracks earlier. Um, but first of all, what we want to do is we want to go to our... Uh, Explorer side of things okay um, and I want to show you something actually okay so we got our performance I think I showed you this in the last tutorial video actually when you click on the DT performance or in your any in your case any other folder you'll notice that you'll see this down here is loading uh, you'll get these weird errors about cover art being too big etc etc but it's still constantly loading it still hasn't actually fully loaded all of my tracks that are inside my performance folder so if I were to say open up this folder and want to play one of the tracks that it hasn't scanned in yet I would have to wait for a tractor to find it before I can actually import it and play it so obviously using folders as playlists is not recommended you definitely want to make sure that you got these nifty little uh, blue triangle things in here. Those are your playlist actual files. The reason why you want to use playlists is because playlists, really honestly what it does is it creates an indexed file that Tractor looks at and says, oh, okay, cool. I know where this is. And what it does is it shoots out, grabs that file, loads it for you. So it doesn't actually have to scan. Now, the problem with that is if you accidentally delete one of those files and you go to play it, you'll get one of those little uh, exclamation points because it can't find the file. So, you know, don't delete files. <laughs> That's the best way to go with it. So, all right, now that the performance folder is all completely imported here, what we're going to do is we're going to look at our import date and we're going to hunt down the Blaze It Up. There's our Blaze It Up right here, okay? First thing you want to do is you want to highlight the file, okay? And then you want to come down here and we're going to go to Analyze. 
All right, most people are gonna to wanna to use the all function. I personally will not. I will use my uh, special because I use something else to scan my keys. Um, and then what I'll do is I'll hit okay. All right, it's gonna analyze it. You'll see the progress bar down here. Now while that's going, I'm gonna show you how I actually found that that fast. All these things up here at the top are ways to categorize your music. You could do it to the same layout that I do if you like. Uh, it just works for me. If not, you can minimize it to a lot less information. I have my key right here. We have my musical key right here. Play count, uh, on BPM of the track, rating. Um, then we have the title of the track. We have the artist of the track. We have the time, the total time, our last played. Import date. Import date's how I found it real fast. You know, if it was all backwards or weird and jumbled up, let's say it was, you know, organized by artist or whatever, you know, your import dates are all over the place. Well, you know that you actually imported that song today, so if you, you know, double click it, you'll see where the import date comes in and then all your songs that you loaded actually comes in. So way easier to find stuff. Now, you'll also see over here you'll see analyzed. Now I throw analyzed on here because I can see if it's been analyzed. If something hasn't been analyzed, it will say not analyzed or it'll say none. When you try to load a track that hasn't been analyzed, it actually takes a good minute before you can see all the waveforms. And you can actually play the actual file without having any, you know, weird stuff happening. What I mean by weird stuff is honestly like your effects not working correctly or if you're you're running remix decks or if you're running samples and uh, you don't want to run a sample to a track that hasn't been fully analyzed mainly for the sole fact that it won't work. Now as far as gridding and everything else are concerned, there's actually a complete dedicated tutorial to gridding. So I'm not going to get into it too hardcore, but I do want to show you the beginning parts of it. So anyway, here's the beginning of the track. Pretty good little track. Uh, so first things first, what you want to do is you just want to make sure that this little beat guy down here is actually dead on on the first beat. Okay. Now you'll notice that before this track, you got two other tick marks here, and you got some weird, you know, wave stuff going on over here. That happens all the time. Now the problem is, Tractor initially will sometimes throw it over here because that's a big, you know, looking waveform, even though it's not really a waveform, which can make like I said, your effects not work correctly, your remix decks not work correctly, your live remixing not work correctly. Uh, pretty much everything inside a tractor is dependent upon where these grids sit. So it's definitely worth the extra effort to drop your uh, your beat grids. So anyway, I'm going to zoom into this track as far as I can by hitting the plus button over here on the right side of that deck. And you'll notice that even though when it was zoomed out, it looked like it was dead on. Once we zoom in, you can see that it's not. Uh, Tractor Scratch Pro 2 actually added the new HD waveforms. Currently, the view I'm looking at is the Spectrum View. Spectrum View has the multicolors, so you can actually kind of see what instrument is being played without having to physically hear it. And then the next thing you want to do is if you don't have that drop down menu you just saw, there's this nifty little arrow down here. This arrow will actually drop down the advanced menu. And then you want to click on Grid, okay? The grid. First thing you want to do, you can do two two ways. You can try to you know find it dead on like so, and, and then drop your grid that way. How you would do it that way is you would actually just hit the trash can, delete it, and then hit your drop point. Okay. Now I'm gonna just go ahead and delete it again. I'm gonna put it back where it was. Let's put it over here. Okay. So let's say that's where it is. Now this is a quick way that I use just because I don't have to you know be so precise. I can just look at it and say okay I gotta move it. So I come over here to this and I just move it over. Uh, and then I kind of decide, okay, cool, That's that That looks about dead on. Now, another thing here, 127.999, uh, yeah, that is that needs to be pushed up. Most of your dance tracks are going to be exact BPM. If it's not an exact BPM, the exception to that rule is going to be importing vinyl into Tractor. Obviously, you know, you're running a quartz lock on your record, and it's just not going to be a constant BPM. It'll be some weird, goofy, off-the-wall BPM. Another thing would be, too, as well, is if you had tracks that actually change BPMs in the middle of it. Yeah, you got to keep a lookout for that stuff, but like I said, when we go over it in depth in the um, beat gridding tutorial, you'll understand it a little bit more. But the main thing for right now, make sure your grid is dead set on the first beat, and once it is, then your effects will work correctly, and any of the additional remix functions with the remix decks, setting loops, etc. will all work correctly. Now, as far as organizing and prepping your tracks, uh, as you saw over here, I actually have a bunch of playlists. Okay, my playlists, they're quick, they're quick. They change, they do the things. You'll notice that some of them, like, uh, for example, my classic mix-up, um, you know, I'm, I'm not obviously running around gridding Billie Jean and I will survive that often. 
and you can also see that none of my BPMs are right here. These guys are, you know, a little bit different. Obviously, they're not, you know, your your straight up dance tracks. Most of these were actually performed by live drummers. So unless you run these things through Ableton, there is no way that it will be a constant BPM. So don't try to fight it and try to grid it because it's impossible. It's not going to happen. Not unless you, like I said, run it through Ableton and then warp the tracks out. You can also see, you know, some of them are locked. You know, I got some that did grid just right. Um, even my Billie Jean, Billie Jean's 117.174. That kind of honestly just became an average. The grids fall off in the middle of it, but it ultimately comes back to that 117.174 by the end. But you'll notice one thing is that when I click these, it's immediately switching. They're quick to find. Um, you'll see that you got your quick playlist up here. Now, the way to move these and create these playlists is you actually just grab it. And you could just drop it into the place. And it, what it, it looks like it's going to put the breaks into the performance, but that's not the case. It's actually just going to put the breaks in place of the performance when you drop that guy down. So uh, let's, let's, let's go ahead and yeah, let's, let's put it there. See, now see now I've got double breaks, and it didn't actually delete my performance. My performance is still down here, and then I can move that guy back. Whoop, there we go. So if you want to change any of the folders up here, just remember you guys should drag these little guys up to the top of this here, and you'll be able to get to them quick. Now. The ones I put up here are obviously the ones that I use the most, so that way I can quickly access them when I'm in a performance uh, situation. However, I still have access to all these over here on the left-hand side. That is how I organize my music. That's how I keep everything ready to go, and that's how I pretty much import it and, and run with it. Next thing I do after that, after I put it into my library, is I actually go through and listen to the songs. Be sure to listen to your songs. As far as Tractor is concerned, you really want to because you can set your cue points and everything, and you can do it real quick. You know, over time, you get used to doing it, and then you can run with it. Two things you get out of it. One, you prep your track. Two, you have cue points. I lied. There's three. And the third thing is that you actually listen to the track. You'd be surprised the amount of DJs out there that don't listen to new songs that they download until they go out and perform them. That's really not a good idea. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that in any type of performance situation, mainly because you have no idea how the drops happen, if there's any additional four bars, or if there's an eight bar in the middle of a phrase, or if it changes BPMs, or if there's, you know, those, those trick drops, you know, the ones that, you know, you're like, one, two, three, four uh no one okay you know so you know you definitely want to listen to those because you could honestly mess up really bad and you don't want to do that in front of people so ultimately you go through you set your cues and everything else uh, that is how you organize your music library anyway so if i didn't show you this this is how i have my stuff laid out bpm title rating i think i did tell you that as far as adding anything this is how you do it just right click it and you have a whole bunch of different options that you can use to browse and navigate your library but like I said, use your playlist. Your playlist load faster. Think of playlists as crates uh, for you Serato users that are making the change. Lay out everything to your own liking. Everything inside of Tractor is fully customizable, so customize it. Make it yours. There's, uh, I got a good friend of mine that uses Tractor as well, and when it comes to playing on his system, I can't do it because his system is laid out differently than mine, all the way across the board. Uh, and and so there's times that. You know, I do have to use it, and I can. I mean, I just have to pay attention and pay attention a lot more because his system is, is set up for his liking and not mine. Um, and like I said, it's all preference, and that's the best part about the Tractor software other than its abilities and limitless, you know, musical possibilities is that it is customizable to the user that's using it. So, yeah, keep that in mind. Play with Tractor this week. Figure some new stuff out figure out your new layouts. Um, I'd love to hear how everything's going. So if you want to leave comments in the YouTube video. Again, guys, my name is Dav Intrigue and you guys enjoy making remixes and enjoy playing music and, and delivering the passion to all of your fans and people that listen to you. Again, guys, my name is Davin Trigue. Thank you very much for tuning into this uh, second tutorial of my tutorial series. You guys, have fun making music, have fun playing with Tractor, and when we come back, our next tutorial is actually going to be over playing songs using the internal mixer inside of Tractor, also using internal effects, internal, pretty much internal everything. Uh, the next tutorial is going to definitely go over the internal capabilities of Tractor, and then uh, following that, uh, we're going to go to the actual musicality of things, counting beats, counting phrases, and uh, being able to incorporate those into your mixes. So again, guys, enjoy it and have a great time. If you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on my Facebook. It's www.facebook.com forward slash DJ Davintrigue. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe.